Welcome back. In part one, we started to look at the importance of unifying behaviour in relation to how price data is handled across backtesting and live trading. If you don't take action to do this, your backtests will not give you a good indication of what results you're likely to expect in live trading, rendering the backtesting process useless. We also looked at a real life example using a price chart to illustrate how the issues relating to this manifest themselves. So if you haven't already, I'd highly recommend that you watch it. If you need a link to the first part, then you can find it in the description right below. But before we get into the detail of how to unify behaviour, we first need to ensure we thoroughly understand the mechanics around a couple of areas. The first is the delivery of price data to the algo. And this, of course, is different in a live context compared with backtesting. And the second thing we need an understanding of are the price data models that are used in backtesting. So the ones we're going to look at are synthetic ticks, real ticks, M1 open high low close bars and bar open prices. And these are the four models that are provided within the MT5 strategy tester. And only once we have an understanding of both of these can we actually consider how we need to go about unifying the processing across all of the possible combinations. So let's look at tick delivery, first of all, from the context of live trading. So let's look at this specifically from the perspective of MetaTrader 5. Here, the price feed will be delivered from the MT5 server, which is hosted by your broker, and it will be delivered to the MT5 client, which is running on your VM or your own PC. So as a tick comes in, that then gets delivered to your expert advisor. That then gets processed in the on tick function, which is all fairly simple. However, in a live context, ticks can often arrive in quick succession, especially when the markets are moving quickly. So during the main trading sessions, and especially when any economic news has recently been released. So let's look at this from the perspective of just two ticks arriving in quick succession. So these will both be delivered from the MT5 server to the client. They'll then both attempt to be delivered to the EA. However, if the previous tick is still being processed by the on tick function at the time the second tick arrives, this second tick gets discarded. It won't be processed by the EA. So although there's an attempt to deliver every tick to the EA, they won't all get processed in a live context. And of course, remember, there's no concept of delivering M1 OHLC bars or open bar data to the EA in live trading. They are just both data constructs for the purposes of backtesting. And as we've said, if the on tick function is still processing the previous tick when the next one arrives, then that second tick will not be processed, it gets discarded. And if you think about it, this has to happen to avoid the algo falling behind current prices. However, the more efficient your code is, and the quicker the on tick is processed on each iteration, the fewer ticks will be missed, of course. Now, this scenario of ignoring ticks is not something that happens when you run your EA in a back test in the strategy tester. Here, every tick that gets delivered to the EA will be processed. And this is just one of the reasons why live trading results will never exactly replicate results in the strategy tester, even when using identical tick data. Because ticks will be missed in live trading that will be processed in a backtesting context. So this has two implications. The first is that there will be slightly different open prices and closed prices and different execution times. And secondly, there's also a small chance of missing trades in live compared with backtest. And this occurs when a tick is received in live that would have triggered an entry or an exit condition but this tick was disregarded because the previous one was still processing. 
And then if the following ticks retreated from the execution threshold, this would mean the trade wasn't opened. But of course, because that tick that was missed in live was processed in backtesting, the trade would have opened there. OK, so now let's move on to the delivery of ticks in backtesting. So here there's no NT5 server required. All of the backtest is undertaken from the NT5 client and specifically from the strategy tester module. So if the same two ticks are delivered to the EA here, the first one is processed by onTick and the second one just waits until onTick has finished and then that tick also gets delivered to the function. So that's the difference in behavior between the two. So we now understand that every tick that is delivered to the EA gets processed, but depending on the model that's being used, this will determine which and how many ticks do get delivered. So this is a configuration choice within the MT5 strategy tester. And the backtest price models that can be chosen are every tick, every tick based on real ticks, one minute OHLC, and open prices only. So we're going to start off by looking at the most accurate modeling, which is using every tick based on real ticks. So as we said before, if you trade any high frequency or time or price sensitive scalping systems, then this model is recommended for backtesting and optimizations. However, you have to understand that it takes much longer to perform backtests than some of the alternative methods. And it can be overkill for many strategies. So you've got to ask yourself the question, does one minute matter that much for a trade duration of eight hours? So let's now take a detailed look at what data is actually delivered to the expert advisor using this model. So this is an actual representation of tick data for a one minute period. And in this particular scenario, there are 123 ticks in that one minute period. Now for simplicity, I'm just showing the bid price here. But in reality, the ask price is also used. So if there's a variable spread, that will be used within the backtest. So during that one minute period, if we look at the development of a M1 bar, this is what it would look like throughout that one minute duration. And the very first tick to occur in that minute would produce the open price of the bar. We then notice that the price falls very slightly and this then forms the low price. But price then begins to increase and when it reaches this short term high, this produces a high of the one minute candle. When this is then broken and a new high is produced, this increases the size of the candle. And of course, the final tick that's received within that one minute period gives us the close price of the candle. Now, although I've shown a one minute bar here, the same principles exactly apply for the generation of higher time frames. But why should we be concerned about this if we're using tick data? Well, it's important because it's the open, high, low and close values from bar data that the majority of indicators use. So regardless of the fact of whether you're using tick data or not, your indicators are still using bar data in order to calculate their values. So when we use this mode of operation in a back tester, it does use real spread from each tick based on the ask bid difference, which is of course a good thing. But because so many ticks need to be processed, so 123 in this one minute period that we just looked at, back testing using this method can take excessive lengths of time. Okay, so now that we have an understanding of the real tick model, we'll move on to the every tick model, which maybe isn't everything it seems. So here, this mode of operation does not use real ticks. Only four ticks, in fact, from every minute are real, and these are based on reverse engineering the M1 OHLC data. So each of the ticks circled in green here do represent real data. However, all of the interim ticks are synthetically generated based on Elliott wave theory. And a word of caution here, the high and the low values 
might not be generated in the correct order. And that, of course, is because from open, high, low, close bar data, it's impossible to know whether the high or the low occurred first. And so the MT5 strategy tester makes an educated guess at what the order of the high and the low probably were in order to generate that synthetic tick data. And it does that by looking at whether the low price and the high price occur closer to the open or the close of the bar. And so in this particular example here, this is probably what happened with the low value being generated before the high value. However, that might, of course, not have been the case. And this might have been what actually happened in the real price feed. So now we need to look at how the one minute OHLC and the open price backtest models work. And we do this in the next part. So click top right to view this now.